I mean. Just before I ask about the, the position in the Conservative Party, obviously there's been some distinguished leaders of the Labour Party, um, uh, and including um, <laughs> yourself, but others. Some, some undistinguished ones. <laughs> They're called losers. <laughs> <laughs> but the distinguished leaders of the Labour Party, why did they not put, make a better case if they believed that um, the EU was a good uh, and worthwhile venture? Well, it kicked off with some doubt. And you can go back to Clem. And through Gateskill and his thousand years uh, of our history to be obliterated, uh, through to the pragmatic and sensible Harold Wilson, who managed to convince himself and enough of his party that making an application was a good idea, which then failed, uh, and then the tide ebbed and flowed, particularly influenced by people who should have known better, uh, my dear beloved comrade Michael Foote amongst them, um, uh, who thought that there would be um, a, a total abolition of British parliamentary sovereignty uh, if we were to go into or remain in uh, the European community. That was reinforced, of course, by the illusions of Tony Benn. And so there had to be in the 1980s an act of internationalist recovery, which in policy terms we accomplished, uh, but in terms of soul, I'm not sure we ever secured. Um, everybody's familiar here, even young people with much of the history of the 1990s and the continuity of policy um, and the ups and downs relating, mainly downs relating to the euro. Uh, and then we get the readmission of conservative governments. So um, I'm not being flippant or superficial uh, when I say that uh, for most of the time, the Labour Party and its leadership reflected the general mood of, I'll be very polite, reservation about the depth of our engagement. 